You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host, and I am here with one of my favorite people, Laverne. <laughs> Governor, how are you? Oh, I'm well, thank nice you. Nice to see you. I'm Thanks just for now coming learning on. I'm one of your favorites, so I'll take it. Oh, you've been one of my favorites. <laughs> you do great work. Yeah, thank um, you. You've taken your own life, yeah. and you want to help other people. Yeah. So I love the name. I, I had to ask you again because I mess it up. <laughs> love Life Now Foundation. Foundation. Yes, okay? yes. And you help people. Yeah. How? Yeah, that's that, that's the hope. We spread a year, awareness year round on the issue of domestic violence in a, in a number of ways. Um, and you know, I started this foundation uh, to do just that, and it spun into uh, different initiatives that we continue to host each year that get people out and about talking about the issue of domestic violence. And in return, uh, a lot of people then reach out to us to try to find out what resources are available uh, when they're seeking to leave an abusive situation. And we also try to get people informed about uh, shelters and agencies that are available to them that they might not necessarily have known about prior to coming into contact with and us. And there are different agencies and yes. you guys all collaborate with each other plus law enforcement yes. obviously. Yes. I mean you, you you know and law enforcement I know there's a there's a lot of fear right now right, right. in the world in yeah. this country right at right. the moment yeah. about people that are abused are afraid to do anything about that abuse yeah. because they could be here um, from another country. Illegally, right. Okay. Or legally. Right, or, right. Or it's, it, it's, it's, it's a financial thing mm -hmm. where, um, you know, sometimes people are trapped in a relationship because of money. Mm -hmm. Yes, there okay. are many reasons why victims end up staying in these types of relationships, and you just named two of them, uh, uh, financial, uh, where they have been supported by their abuser for the span of their relationship. And if they leave, they're not sure how they're going to take care of themselves and or their children. Right. So a lot of the time, uh, abusers hold that over their uh, victims' heads. Uh, you know, if you leave, I'll keep the children because there's no way that you can support them on your own. Hmm. Or if you leave, the, you're nothing without me. Um, or and they'll then, never see the Or they'll never see or the we'll kids again. The kids. Or we'll yeah. keep the kids, right. And so uh, one of the other reasons that you talked about was uh, trust of the police. And uh, that's one of the things that I had recently uh, chimed in on with the Trust Act that's locally here trying to be passed in Brockton. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Trust Act says, you know, that if you work with the police, if you're here illegally, uh, we will not deport you. We are not ICE and we are not here to, you know, enforce ICE's regulations. We are just here to help you. Um, and as it relates to domestic violence, a lot of the times victims don't want to call the police because, again, they're here illegally and the abuser has told them that if you call the police, they're going to deport you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of victims sometimes come here from other countries um, via their abuser and they say, uh, I'll marry you uh, for you to get permanent residency. Sometimes that marriage never comes and they're just here. Right. They're laggering in the wind. And so again, they, they stick out the abuse because there's, they think there's no other alternative. Um, uh, but the Trust Act seeks to help that. So, you know, those are just some of the reasons that uh, victims end up staying in these types of relationships. And there's a lot of confusion about the Trust Act versus sanctuary cities. Right, there's, right. there's all sorts of political sure, hyperbole that's going on right yeah, now. And, right. and it's hard to sort through all the yeah, noise. It's yeah. hard to turn on the TV right now, personally, for me. True. I, I'm having a hard time watching all of this stuff. I agree Every with day, you. We're, we're a little over a dozen days into a new administration, and all of a sudden, everybody's nervous. Everybody's okay? nervous. Now, of right. course, I got to be careful because because uh, you end up fighting with people that are friends of yours right, or people on Facebook. Right, right. Everybody because, has their own opinion. Right, yeah. right, right. Yep. So if someone needs help, yep. where do they go in this area? How does it all work out? You, you steer them in the right direction. You steer them to the right agency. They sure. come to you. How does it work? Sure. So uh, just, um, you know, just recently, someone had reached out to us on Instagram, of all places, right? Mm -hmm. um, we post pictures there of the things that we're doing and initiatives that we're taking. And this person inboxed and said, hey, you know, I'm in an abusive relationship and I'm, I'm, I've started taking the steps to leave, but I want to make sure I do it correctly. You talk about safety planning. Well, what's that? And so I introduced this person to uh, uh, an agency in their area uh, where advocates that are, are on hand and can help them safety plan to exit a relationship. So if you think you have all the bases covered, but an advocate can 
walk you through the exact steps that you need to get to the other side mm -hmm. of abuse. And so um, that's one of the things that happens. And then, you know, sometimes someone just wants to talk. Uh, in that case, I, I listen. Um, a lot of the times victims are not sure what they should do. They think the hell that they're going through uh, is, is, is better than the, the unknown hell that they may face when they go to a shelter because they have all these myths in their heads about what a shelter is. They think it's a big open room with beds. Well, it's not. Um, you know, so we talk those things out. Um, you know, and then at other times, you know, someone is looking to just figure out a way just to get out, period, mm -hmm. whether it's in their area or not. Uh, in that case, we direct folks to the statewide domestic violence agency, which is SafeLink. Um, and uh, that's run by Cass Smyrna, uh, which is a domestic violence agency here in Boston. Uh, but the statewide domestic violence agency is to able to place folks um, in, a, in a shelter that may not be in the area, but again, gets them out and safe. Um, and then there's a list of services that shelters provide. One thing I want to highlight is that we tend to focus on a shelter that um, for about a year, uh, once we uh, collaborate with them, this year it's REACH out mm -hmm. of Waltham. And so I wanted to point that out. REACH uh, Beyond Domestic Violence is what they're called. And they are a phenomenal agency that has shelter services and a, ton, a plethora of things that uh, they offer to victims to help. And so we're working with them. We're excited to, to, to be collaborate, collaborating with them. Um, but there are a ton of others that people need to be aware of. Okay, so your phone number and your website, I know you're all over social media. So right. tell us whatever you want to tell us. Sure. Sure. They're giving me the three-minute cue. Yeah, sure. So, so uh, 617-803-8357 is how they can reach Love Life Now Foundation. Uh, info at lovelifenow.org. Email me anytime that comes directly to me. Um, and www.lovelifenow.org is our website. Um, we, as I mentioned, host a ton of events. One of them is a huge one for us that's coming up at the end of February, February 24th, the, the White Ribbon Night Gala. Mm -hmm. And you can see I'm wearing my white ribbon and I came and I brought you one. Okay. Hopefully Thank you'll you. be able to put that on. Mm -hmm. And the White Ribbon Night Gala is patterned after the White Ribbon Campaign here in Massachusetts. It's a nationwide campaign that asks more men to speak up on the issue of domestic violence. Super Bowl Sunday is coming. It's a, it's a, it's a great time to talk to your friends, your neighbors that are gathering for the Super Bowl, why it's important that violence against women is wrong. You're probably gonna see a lot of ads about it, but simply having someone, I'm gonna ask you, ask you to take the pledge. It okay. simply says. It know. says, from this day forward, I promise to be part of the solution in ending violence against women and all gender-based violence. Excellent. And that is the simple pledge that you take as a man, anybody, your brother, your, your uncle, your father, your friend, ask them to join in that 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 call, that that pledge um, and 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 pledge no more violence against women it's 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 easier said than done but the narrative to date has been you know manhood and I'm a man and this is what makes me a man well the issue is that the narrative that we're trying to help change and, and the white ribbon campaign is trying to help change headed by Jane Doe uh, here in Massachusetts is reimagine manhood what does it really mean to be a man mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to violence against women so we're excited about the gala uh, we have a, a lineup of great men that night um, that talk to the men in the room and, and then we have the men take the pledge throughout the night they told me to wrap it up but where is the gala Granite Links Country Club in Quincy, okay. Friday, February 24th at 8 p.m. It's a phenomenal night. We have a short program, and then there's dinner and dancing. You can't miss out. There you go, and we'll get it on your website. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Laverne. It's yes, a pleasure to always have you. <laughs> You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.